Okay. What older established black women need to understand is they need to understand their competition. Okay? Now, other cultures don't knock their women for being educated and being professional, but they still say, hey, we still value youth. That's it. You know, there's this belief that black men don't want their women to be smart. And other cultures, you know, promote their whole idea of women being smart, being professional, and being educated. Yeah, they do. But all they do is say, yeah, we want that, but we want you to be educated. Right? You know, um, in my program right now, uh, you know, my grad school program, every week there's, and roughly a lot of the women were all in the probably, you know, the 24 to 27 range. There's some a couple of people in the outliers, but we're all within that range. And every week, right, there's always like one girl who's like, oh, you know, I'm getting married, so I won't be able to attend class. You know, she's sending out an email because we have some group project or they're missing class because all oh, my sister's getting married or my um, sorority sister's getting married. So these women are still on track to being professional, having these degrees and having these jobs. But they understand that, hey, these men value youth. So we have to get it earlier. Now, of course, there are going to be women who miss the boat. There are going to be women who don't understand, who, for whatever reason, got lazy or forgot that there still has to be this youth component to go with being professional and being highly educated. So they're just out there. They're single. Um, you go to any bar, go to any pub, and there will always be these older, single, non-black women. And I can guarantee you, they, you know, uh, are open to dating black men. And more than likely, they probably go after black men more than anything because the men of their own culture have already said, if you're not young, I don't, or not relatively young, I don't care what you're doing. Right, you know, when I go to my uh, my gym, and I go to my gym, you know, later on in the evening, um, and it's always this older crowd. You know, there's this older crowd. These, these older black men are getting out for work or whatever, and all the women there tend to be older, tend to be single. You know, and everybody is almost like a, a club type of scene, right? You know, I'm in and I'm out, but sometimes when you're on the treadmill, you're doing something, you'll look and you observe what's going on, and everybody's hollering, and it's all races. And all these women tend to be older. Now, had these women been younger, would they be talking to black men? Probably not. But the whole idea of the, them being professional and being older doesn't mix. You know, they come in and they have their, their suits on and they just look professional. You know, they have the haircut and all this other stuff. And you can tell these non-black women are professional. Right? And like I said before, a couple of years ago, five years ago, would they be entertaining black men at all? Probably not. But they realize that they missed the ball, and that's the biggest thing. You know, uh, a non-black woman who's uh, 30 plus, single and professional, will understand that they missed the ball. Because their culture will tell them so. What people don't understand is, let's say you're Indian, right? And, you know, they socialize with each other. Hey, let's hang out with this married couple or hang out with this family. And, you know, it's just one big social function and everybody's, you know, oh, our kids play together. But if you were a single woman... The other women don't want you around. The married women don't want you around. Because all of a sudden it's like, oh, don't tempt our men. Oh, you're going to try to steal our men. And that happens. It's closed circle. There are certain social networks and even professional networks where the requirement to get in is you have to be a married couple. Because they want stability. You know, they don't want necessarily to have this situation where you have married men and then, you know, uh, and, and, and but you have single women and this, that, and third because it gets complicated. Because let's be real, you know, a, a woman is not afraid to take away, you know, another person's man. It is what it is. A lot of women don't have a problem with being the other woman. So let's call a spade a spade. Especially when she's older and men are just hard to come by. Right? So these, those, they're, they're kicked out. They're ostracized. They're kicked out. Because they're not going to, uh, they're, the women who are with the men, right, of that culture aren't going to allow them to come into the picture and possibly create havoc, right? It's some family uh, graduation party and, the, you know, the families are there and everybody's having fun and this single woman comes in with some short skirt and, you know, and she's just single and all the men are like, oh, you know, you know how men are. You know, they have the beers going and they're talking and all of a sudden she walks in. The other women don't want to see that. So they're kicked out. They're, I, I hate to say it, but they're almost kicked out of the culture.
Not because they're bad people, not because they can't contribute, but the other women who are with those men do not want their men to be tempted. So you have a you have a, a market. I'm not saying it's a big market, but you have a market of uh, non-black women who are older and professional who realize that man, the end is here, right? Or my my chances are limited. Even their parents are like, man, just bring home a man, right? I'm sure if you take some. Um, Asian chick who's older, single, never been married, you know, when she was younger, her parents were probably like, don't bring home any sort of black guys, I don't really care. But now that she's older, right, you know, the mother's probably like, oh my gosh, I want grandchildren and forget the culture, I just want you to be happy. And even the father's is like, man, you know, I still don't want you with black guys, but I don't want my daughter to be single, right? You know, I want my daughter to be happy. So even these whole cultural, uh, um, uh, safeguards against black men start to drop, especially when you factor in Obama and just the whole idea of at least seeing some sort of professional black men out there, and don't and don't even let them be African as well. So even then, the parents themselves will drop their guard down and be like, "Yes, our daughter's finally getting married. It may not be ideal, but at least she's happy. At least she's ta being taken care of. I don't care if the other families in our culture don't agree with it. I can care less." She's married, she can have grandchildren, and we don't have to worry about our older single daughter who's pretty much this black sheep. So there's a market. But on the flip side, when you have older black women who are established and professional, a lot of them think that now they're in their prime. Now they're in their heyday. So there's this whole idea of who's going to get at me or, you know, I have the right to be picky and choosy where the, their counterparts, their non-black counterparts, understand what's going on. Understand that, hey... You better snatch something up. They get it. Right? So apart from this whole idea of there not being enough educated black men or, you know, they don't like black women or they're gay, has everything to do with the fact that other women are more willing to a admit their situation. So they're willing to do more. Okay? They're willing to... Um, it, how can I put this? When you accept the fact that you are in the majority, okay, you operate differently. So a lot of these older non-black women who um, fall outside of what they want to be accept that fact. They accept it, right? And so they, they, they change up their way of thinking and understand what they have to do. Whereas with black women, right, when they end up in this majority, um, a lot of them don't realize what they need to do. A lot of them stay stuck in this whole idea where I'm the exceptional woman. You know, it, 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 it's really one of those things where you, when you break down how a lot of black women think, you can point out the flaw. For example, if you have a certain skill, right, that a lot of people have, why would you hold on to it? So if... Everybody, you know, on the basketball court can shoot a jump shot, and you can shoot a jump shot as well. Why hold on to it? It's not a special skill. But it's funny how black women will say that there's a whole sea of single successful black women, but then they want to hold on to the fact that they're single and successful as if that is supposed to stand out. If all you guys are single, educated, and all this other stuff, why would you use that to stand out? And once again, this is where a lot of older professional black women get beat. Okay, because it's nothing new for you know an uh, Asian chick or a white chick to uh, uh, understand that there are other women just like them who are single, professional, and educated. So they don't hold on to that. So when they approach a black man, she's not going to say, "Oh, you know, I'm single and I'm professional. I have no kids." That's not what she knows. That's not how she was raised. That doesn't mean shit to the men of her own group. So she's gonna say, "Hmm, what else can I do?" And a lot of black, non-black women are mindful, are very mindful of what's going on between black men and black women. A lot of people don't care, but if you know that you know the person that you're going to be with is more than likely going to be a black male, you're going to understand what's going on. You're going to understand the relationship dynamics between professional black men and professional black women. So these non-black women, okay, take that and use it to their advantage. So they're not going to come to a black man and, you know, try to uh, force him to accept the fact that she's quality because she's educated and whatnot. They're going to hold on to other things. Look how sweet I am. Look how polite I am. I can fit in with your family. You know, I, I'm this family woman and I'm a team player. That's what they do. But as far as black women go, they're holding on to a 
uh, this special power that, quote-unquote, every last black woman has. So is it really a special power? No, it's not. So in closing, you do see a lot of professional black men um, uh, dating outside, of course. There's a lot of, but there's also many reasons why this is going on, and a big reason is because of this whole idea of older non-black women understanding what's going on, understanding their reality, whereas you have older professional black women who still think that they are in their prime. So they still think that they have this power and they have this leverage, and it's that, you know, there's no men to choose from, but in reality, the men aren't choosing them. Because the mindset is off. So hopefully you guys were able to follow me. I know I was kind of everywhere. But you guys take it easy. God bless.